Welcome to St. Ambrose as we continue the joy of the Easter season. Alleluia is our song. It is a song of praise and thanks for all the blessings of God in our life. Mostly the blessing of God of Jesus Christ. He opened for us the way to heaven. He promises along the way the path to a fuller life. And the scriptures today will unpack, if you will, that promise, that mystery, that blessing of God. Let's take a deep Ambrose breath as we continue the, the joy of the Easter season. To reflect deeply on the overwhelming love of God. It is a song in of Jesus praise Christ. and thanks for all the blessings of God in our life. Mostly the blessing of God of Jesus Christ. He opened.
Good morning. Only Jesus opens the gate to heaven through his resurrection. And so we invite you to join us in our call to worship number 55. In the front yellow insert, shout to the Lord. Number 55 in the front yellow insert. as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. We welcome this week in the waters of baptism, Caden Nicholas Klingbeil, Francesca Rose Bertoli, Margaret Ann Rudy, and Sienna Faith Vanderhout. We are still in need of many hands for our community day of service, April 19th, 20th, and 21st. We are called to serve one another as a way to spread God's love. There are many opportunities to give of ourselves. Please see the bulletin to see how you and your family can help. Please join us this Tuesday, April 16th at 4 p.m. in Hilkert Hall to help sort and bag canned food to distribute to the needy in Cleveland. Many hands make for light work. The Living Word Healing Prayer Ministry will be offering healing prayer next Saturday after the 4.30 p.m. Vigil Mass. Prayer teams will be available for anyone who is in need of physical, emotional, or spiritual healing. As we prepare to begin Mass today, please turn to those around you and offer a warm word of welcome. Good morning. Our gathering hymn is number 51 in your front white insert, Alive in Christ, number 5-1. Yesterday, forever and today. 
to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised us a new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us with compassion and mercy and forgiveness of sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May, all God, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of good will. of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, 
we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this, we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you que- why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. I often think when we read the scriptures, you know, they're, they're written in a way that are, are flowing and, and, and well-spoken. But I often think to myself, by placing myself in the story, how would Jesus actually have spoke to his apostles? And I think he would have spoke to them much in the way I might speak to my students sometime. Were you not listening to me? I told you this. I told you this. We've gone over this. All these years I was with you and you still don't get it. Much the same way my students the other day, I said, you know, in my classroom I have three words atop my board. One of them, the first one is listen. If you're not listening, and then the second one is to think. Think, and the third one is then you'll eventually learn. So listen, think, learn. And I looked at one of my classes, I said, I don't think we've been listening very well these last couple of days, you know? And it's really because June is coming. That's my, you know, and There are, I'm probably gonna get this wrong, but I think the seniors have 21 or 22 days left in the classroom. The other students a little bit more than that. And all they're thinking about is June. All I'm thinking about is June. (laughs) You know, I really, to be honest. Um, And I think the disciples, maybe all they were thinking about is how great it was that the Savior was around, but they weren't really listening. They were just thinking about what it would be like. You know, and, and in that, Jesus comes to them in the midst of that fear that they have. You know, we hear over the scriptures the last couple weeks that they were afraid. It wasn't what they thought it was going to be. They were, they hadn't been listening. They didn't know the answer yet. And when that happened, in that fear, Jesus comes and stands in their midst and says, peace be with you. I often think that's how it is in our lives when things aren't going well. Or maybe we have that same fear. That same fear, and we are... we haven't necessarily always been listening. Or maybe we have that same fear and we're not recognizing Jesus in our midst the same way that the disciples didn't recognize him standing there until he showed them physically his hands and his feet and ate some food. Jesus comes and stands in the midst of our lives every single day and says, peace be with you. Peace be with you, the peace I leave with you. We're called to to try to figure out what is that fear so that we can experience that peace. We're called to try to look at our lives and we say, maybe, what am I afraid to put myself out there? How am I afraid to be the disciple God calls me to be? What is that fear? Maybe it's a fear of I'm not good enough. Right before Mass, I was talking about how Peter's my favorite saint because no matter how many mistakes I made, Peter made more. Right? (laughs) And Jesus called him out on that. And Jesus calls us, us, even in our fears, 
And even in those troubled times, those times when maybe we aren't seeing God in our lives, he comes and stands in our midst and he says, peace be with you. He says, I'm here, like he said to those disciples. Peace be with you. Jesus comes to offer us that peace each and every day amidst the suffering, the trials, the tribulations, amidst the joys, the good times. He comes and he stands in our midst and we have to just only open our eyes and open our hearts to understand and to see him in the same way he opened the hearts of those first disciples so they could know that he was there. They could know that he was there. And you know, they didn't invite him in. That's the thing. He came to them when they weren't able to see them, see him. He didn't wait for them to say, you know, now's the time, Jesus, I realize you rose from the dead. He came to them and stood in their midst when they weren't able to necessarily know he had risen from the dead and said, peace be with you. He does the same for us. So maybe in this week ahead, we need to maybe take some time to try to sit down and one of those fears that keep us from being the disciple that God calls us to be and allow and ask Jesus to enter in and offer us that peace. We're called to be the disciple. We too are witnesses of the things that they are of the gospel. So in this week, take a moment and think about what's holding you back. Where's your fear? And ask yourself, ask Jesus to enter in. And then, just like they're witnesses and Jesus sent them out, so take a moment maybe to pray in your life, who's that person in your life or that you know that you're around that may also need to know the peace of Jesus who may not have it? And if they're open to it, reach out to them and say, I know things aren't going well right now, but I'm here and I can help you. I can be that presence of Jesus to you. Maybe not say it directly, but that's what you can be. And if you think that maybe they're not open to it, pray. Pray for that person, or maybe you're unable to reach out because they're, you don't know how to get a hold of them, but you know they need you. Pray. Say, Jesus, can you be the peace for that person right now? So as we walk into the week, know that Jesus comes and offers us the same peace in our hearts to conquer those fears, to conquer those doubts, and he stands in our midst each and every day. We just need to learn how to recognize it and pay attention to those moments when Jesus stands before us and says, it's tough, I got you, peace be with you. And then reach out to those in need and offer them that same peace that Christ has been offering you. These words, listen once, all who are thirsty, come to the water. All who are hungry, eat without price. We are your children, running to meet you. Lord, fill our hearts. Teach us to love, to live as the body of Christ. I'll sing it once. <clears throat> All who are thirsty, come to the water. All who are hungry, eat without price. We are your children, Running to meet you, Lord, fill our hearts. Teach us to love, to live as the body of Christ. I've been privileged uh, to be a part of the parish about once a month for the last year in this year of Eucharistic revival. And this is a song that I wrote specifically for your first communion uh, last year and this year. So it'll be sung here shortly. Let me help. And uh, so as, as we gather today, uh, and Deacon's homily is so powerful, I would say uh, what we desire as a community is to run, to run to him. So I'm going to invite you to sing it, to sing it like you mean it, to sing it like it's not that we're not Catholics at 9 o'clock in the morning, but like we're Lutherans at noon. That's how you want to sing it, right? That's how loud you want to sing. So I'll, I'll, I'll start it, but your part, all who are thirsty... All who are hungry, well, good try. All who are hungry, eat without price. Try that. All who are thirsty, come to the water. All who are hungry, eat without price. We are your children, running, running to, to meet, meet you. you. That's your line, running to meet you. Make sure you get it. We'll try it all together. All right, here we go. 
Here we go. Sorry, a little technical difficulty first thing in the morning. Try this. All who are thirsty, come to the water. All who are hungry, eat without price. We are your children, running to meet you. Lord, fill our hearts, teach us to love, to live as the body of Christ. In this feast of thanksgiving, we become what we receive. Blessing vessels of Jesus and his love for all we see. All who are thirsty, come to the water. All who are hungry, eat without price. We are your children, running to meet you. Lord, fill our hearts, teach us to love, to live as the body of Christ. You sound good, and that's with half of you not moving your lips yet. That's just a, it's amazing. You sound great, actually. Listen, last thought, you won't forget these words. When I say them, you'll remember them. People who were not very much like Jesus liked Jesus. People who were not very much like Jesus liked Jesus because truth is captivating and because love is captivating. And the Easter stories are all filled with people running to Jesus. And as we heard beautifully in the homily, sometimes we do it well, sometimes we don't. But when we do, the funny thing is others see it and they run with us. Evangelization is not so much a, a doing, but a being. Because when we seek the light and we're filled with the light, people are captivated by the light. And it's not us that's captivating, it's God that's captivating. And what's the point of any of this if we do not receive the body of Christ, to be the body of Christ, to go out and live as the body of Christ. And so we sing it one more time, recognizing that that's the story of Easter, that we were awakened to a new day and we lived it in such a way that it drew others to it. So we pray one more time. All who are thirsty, come to the water. All who are hungry, eat without price. We are your children, running to meet you. Lord, fill our hearts, teach us to love. Live as the body of Christ. Lord, fill our hearts. Teach us to love. To live as the body of Christ. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born to the Father before all ages, God and God, life and life, true God and true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess as a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Together we run to the Father with our needs and the needs of the world.
for the Holy Church of God, in union with Pope Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious ministers, that God will, who gathers us together by the Holy Spirit, may help us grow in unity of faith and love, for leaders of nations, that they may seek for all people peace that is rooted in the justice and mercy of God, for healing, that the Spirit will renew the gift of life in all who are sick, struggling with addictions or weakness that comes with aging, for the women and fiat teens on retreat this weekend, May the Holy Spirit fill them with grace and give them courage to give witness of Christ by living lives built on faith and love. We pray for Helen Timothy, the intention of this Mass, and for all who have died, especially remembering Joan Lucille Kraft, Dennis Nestor, Clifford Nowak, Robert Kastner Sr. and Thomas Youngberg. May God comfort their families who mourn and unite all their faithful departed into the joy of heaven. For the prayers we hold in our hearts. For those who serve to protect us. For those who have no one to pray for them. And for the one person here who needs our prayers the most. We lift our voices as we sing. Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers in your time and according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite any children here who brought their envelopes today to place them in the baskets near the altar at this time. Together we join in singing number 170, Hallelujah is our song, number 170.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which, you, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ambrose, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our pre-communion song number 56 in the front yellow insert. Number 56 in the front yellow insert, You Are My King. of the Lord, our communion hymn is number 309, here at this table, number 309, with extra verses in number 574, this nay was made by the Lord. Food for all who hunger 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we go forth being doers, spreading the news of the risen Lord, our closing hymn is number 180. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let the holy anthem rise. 180. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, let the holy anthem rise, and the choirs of heaven chant it in the temple of the skies. Let the mountains skip with gladness, and the joyful valleys ring with those for joining us. May the joy of Easter continue. The gospel today, you heard that you and I are called to be witnesses, witnesses to the Lord. How do you and I go into this week treating every child of God with the greatest of love, care, and respect? This coming weekend at St. Ambrose, we have a special event called Peace, Love, and Prom. It's for all of our special need members to come together and have a wonderful, wonderful celebration, a prom, if you will. And it's a mindfulness that every child of God has a place in this community, and you and I are called to have the heart of God to treat every person with the dignity that comes of being an amazing, beautiful, wonderful child of God, just like you. Let's walk into this week to be witnesses of the overwhelming love of God in Jesus Christ.